ever since I recall I have followed football and ingrained in my heart are the Rangers FC through good and the bad times of happy or sad it will always be Rangers for me for when I was a lad I was led by the hand down the Paisley Road West I will never forget that you sight of the red, blue and white from the day I'd be Rangers for life. And I vowed to my dad, if I too have a lad, I would show him the way as he did on that day. And so now here I stand with young Lyle by the hand after walking down Paisley Road. And welcome along to the next edition of Down the Paisley Road West. I'm delighted to be at the home of Rangers legend of the 60s and that famous team of 63, Mr Ian McMillan. Hi Ian, welcome along today. Thanks very much indeed, look forward to the interview. Good stuff. Ian, we'll start off with your career. As a young lad in 1958 you left Airdrie Onions, where you, where you came from and you signed for Glasgow Rangers, where you joined one of the greatest Rangers teams of the, the 60s, or certainly one of the greatest Rangers teams ever. Tell me about leaving Airdrie, how it felt as a, a young kid, leaving the club you supported and going to Rangers and how, how it all came about. Well, the reason it all came about was that every five years in our time, our era, every five years, if you completed five years, you got a benefit from the club. And I, I asked them to hold it back a year to make it the sixth year is because I was getting married the following year and that would come in handy. So when the tenth year finished, you had to finish your ten years, I went up and asked for my second benefit. And they said, no, you're not getting a benefit until next year. I said, well, that's a bit unfair because we're supposed to get it after every five years completed. Uh, and I, I asked you to hold it back. And I said, well, I'm not very happy about that. So that was the reason I didn't sign for Airdrie at the start of 58-59 and it wasn't until October 58 uh, that the uh, Rangers came along and asked me to sign. And we'll go on in a few minutes time, we'll go on and speak about you going to Rangers but we'll stay with Airdrie for a minute. So years later you, you got the honour of going back to the, the club for where you were born and you became the manager I believe? Well I came back from Rangers and I played two years with the, the team and then they asked me to uh, coach the boys for a year or two. The S Forum boys it was at that time. So I was quite happy to do that. Uh, and then I think it was two years after that that uh, they asked me to be manager. And I was manager at Airdrie for six and a half years. Great. And so, you're, so the, the Ian McMillan story really starts in Airdrie and it finishes in Airdrie as far as the football side That's concerned. Exactly right. And I believe that one of the main things that made you who you were as a player was the was the Airdrie Schools competitions. Do you have any fond memories of them? Very much so. I, I went to Albert Primary School. I was not very brilliant at school and what we looked forward to was playing for the local team, the, the, the school's team. And the highlight was always to play at Brimfield. And every wee boy or every boy up to the age of 14, uh, generally speaking you got picked about 11 or 12. Uh, I got four years at it playing at Brimfield. And uh, that was the highlight of every young boy in the, the local teams, local schools. Was to, the, the highlight would be to play at Broomfield. So just just to to qualify how well you were doing as a player when you were at Airdrie, although you made it to Glasgow Rangers later on and you were a huge success. Tell us about your international career before before you went to Rangers and that, and after when you went to Rangers. Well, I, in total, I had six caps for Scotland, and. Strangely enough, it was five I had it was playing with Airdrie and only I got one when I was playing with the Rangers. Possibly it's because it, well, I was 27 when I went to, to, to uh, Rangers and obviously you're getting a bit older then but that was the reason I, I would presume that I was getting a bit too old for the Scotland team at that time. So it was five at Airdrie which I was delighted to, to have so I, I was really delighted to have six caps. That's fine. So the, the late, great 
Bill Struth once made the comment when he was signing a young Rangers player, the greatest honour that can bestow a man in life is about to be bestowed upon you. And you also had that honour with Scott Simon. How did it feel for Ian McMillan to sign for Rangers Football Club? Well, it, it was actually a bit of a worry because you, you go from Broomfield, where there's a rickety stairs going up the, to the pavilion, but, and you go to Ibrox to sign, and there's these marble stairs, and this luxurious staircase, and then you go out and look at the field, and you go out and look at the track that I have to run round. Broomfield was a small track, and I was quite happy. But I said, am I going to manage to run round that track? It was so big. So it was an enormous feat. And you say to yourself, uh, am I good enough to sign for a team of this nature? Because playing with Airdrie, it was fine. It was a local team. Uh, you hadn't great aspirations, but going to Rangers are expected to do something. You're always expecting to uh, win things. And um, that was my doubt when I went. Was I good enough to play for this particular team? So it's a 1958-59 season, you've just signed for the club and as you make your, your first impressions, you meet new players and I'd be interested in how you got your, how your welcome was, the reaction to meeting the new players, your relationship with the new players and your relationship with Scott Simon, the manager. Well, uh, because I hadn't played from the August to October, I had to play three games in the reserves to begin with so that uh, I was fit to, to play in the first team. But once I got with the first team, eh, I don't know what I worried about because I would think even my even my granddaughter would have played well inside right for that team because you leave Airdrie and you're lucky when you play with the Airdrie to look up and find one pass is all maybe you would get. So he went to play with this team and there was five or six options you could put. So to my mind, it was a team. It was anybody could play in that team inside right at that time because it was such a good team, great players to play in, made it easy for you, and uh, it was a joy to play in. And your relationship with the manager, Scott Simon? Well, it was such a good team that it, well, he didn't have to tell us to do anything. We sort of arranged it ourselves. And uh, possibly there was one time in the whole of the six years I was there that the manager possibly should have changed it. And that was the Eintracht semi-final European Cup over at Eintracht. You could see the writing was a wall that this was a, an outstanding team. We were a marvellous team and we were lucky to come in at half time at one each. And if we had maybe instead, the manager I think should have said, I've seen it as well, and he should maybe have said, let's play a bit tight in the second half. Because we played every game as if it... We attacked, attacked, no matter whether it was playing against Falkirk at Ibrox or whether we were abroad playing Eintracht. We kept attacking, attacking, and we did that in the second half. And of course, I think we should have played it a bit tight in the second half and caused them a bit of problems, don't give them the room to, to play because it was 6-3 the final result. And if we had maybe got it down to 3-2 or something or 3-1, it might have given us a chance for the replay at Ibrox. So that was the only time I would maybe criticise the manager. And I had mentioned that to a, a, a colleague, and he's written a book about it. And it looked as if he was slating Simon. And I would, the last thing I would want would that to be my opinion of Simon, because I got on well with him. And he allowed the team to play the way it, the, everybody agreed that that was the way we should play. And he had great results with it. He had great. There was he won cup after cup with it. So that would be the only blemish, I would think. Yeah, and and that, and that the famous match you talk about then in the next round it was Real Madrid Frankfurt in the final. So it was. That well, was well that was that was a great thing. That we we knew before we went to play Eintracht that the final was going to be at Hamden, and it would be marvellous to get through that game, that game against Eintracht to play at Hamden in front of a huge Scottish crowd and that would really have lifted us even though we were going to be playing Real Madrid. So it's, it's like football, you look back on it and it's all the ifs and buts about it and if we had done maybe that second half it might have changed but if again you just don't know. 1963 season many believed was one of the greatest ever Rangers teams. Rangers were at a pomp and as you said they were playing against the, the cream of Europe and no more so than the Rangers midfielder and your friend Jimmy Baxter. Well, 
is I would think he was an outstanding player. He, he was a character, but a wonderful player, a wonderful left foot. He would buy players as if they weren't there. And that's, that's a tremendous asset to do that. And he wasn't fast or anything. Because a lot of the good players like Messi, for example, and now he's got speed to ally to his control. Baxter had only control, and he went by players as if they weren't there. And he could pass a ball with that left foot, curl it round players. He was a marvellous player. And uh, somebody had said to me about how Baxter got to, to Rangers. And uh, I said, Jim, you know, the reason you got to Rangers was because we played... Wraith Rovers at Ibrox one Saturday and you were against me and as you know I'm not good in the air I'm not, I can't tackle too well and I'm not fast so you had a wonderful game against me so that was possibly that Mr Simon must have seen that and that was how you came to Ibrox I kidded them on about that for quite a long while So Jim Bass, how, how highly would you rate him as a player? Well he was an outstanding player, there was no question of that he had, he had that tremendous ability and he and he was a great encouragement to other players too. So, one of the top-notch players. And one of the one of the, the legends I interviewed recently was Davy Wilson. Davy Wilson, when I asked him the same questions about the 63 team, described Mr Ian McMillan as the finest passer of a ball, and he said, ever. What's your recollection of uh, wee Davy? Well, I remember, I remember wee Davy. He was a tenacious wee winger, very good control, uh, and he could take men on, and he also was in, always in position to get the ball. He used it the head, uh, he knew that if he was a tough fella playing against him, keep well away, and he always used the open space. And what he was also good at was running from the wide past the back to get the inside forwards ball through between the, the back kick and the centre half. He had good he had the right timing for that and his other big asset was he scored an awful lot of goals from the, the left wing so that was a big big asset when you can score a lot of goals from the wing and another great character of the team a great character a great <laughs> kept, kept you all on your toes and whilst we're on the subject of the wing play um, Scott and Henderson have you any, any views on how you played alongside both of them? well I, at the time I played with Rangers I'd only the two wingers and that was Alex Scott to begin with, and Willie Henderson for the second part. Uh, both great wingers. Both wanted the ball differently. Alec always liked the ball at his feet. And uh, he kept telling me that. He said, I don't want it in front of the back kick of that. I want it at my feet. And he was always very good at that, because it, and he liked it in the space. And he made the space himself, because I always looked up, and there he was. He was always away from the back ready for it and all I did was hit the ball straight to him and he did what was necessary and again a good finisher like David Wilson scored a lot of goals and that was a big asset and he was strong uh, and a uh, very very good player and then we come to Willie Henderson now Willie Henderson we talked about the schools cup he played with every schools cup for Calder Crooks which was a local village village team so he knew all about Airdrie, and he was an Airdrie supporter. He used to come and watch me, he said, when I was a player. And he wanted the ball in front of him. He wanted the ball between the centre half and the back kick. And I was quite happy to do that, because that meant if I could hit that accurately, that was my job done, and I could stay in the middle of the park. So Willie was great at that, and he was fast. He was really fast. And once he got the ball in the, in the open space, it was very tricky to the backs couldn't take couldn't get the ball off him. So he was a wonderful winger and scored a lot of goals too. So he was top notch player. If all the all the players all the players that I've played with and that I think Henderson and Baxter were the two best players, I would think, that we had at that time. Nothing not to say anything about the other players. The other players were great players. Don't get me wrong, they were wonderful players. But I think Baxter and Henderson had that wee touch extra.